Section 6.2, Polynomials and Linear Factors. In this section, we're going to analyze the factored form of a polynomial, and we're going to write a polynomial function from its zeros. So when we write a polynomial in standard form, we talked about this in the last section, we need to multiply, combine like terms, um, do whatever we can to get as few a terms as possible as well as put them in descending order by degree. Okay, so one type of example that I wanted to show you was this one here where we have to multiply three binomials together. And when I multiply, I can only multiply two things at once, right? So same thing is true with these binomials. I'm gonna start with multiplying two binomials together, and in this case, I'm gonna start with the first two. And I'm just gonna use my FOIL. Now, when I do my FOIL, I get x squared, and then um, I'll get x times 2, so that's going to make me 2x, and 1 times x will make me a 1x. So my middle terms are going to combine, and I'm actually going to get a 3x. Now, if you would prefer to write those out and then combine them, that's fine. I'm going to kind of skip that step there. And then lastly, for the last two, 1 times 2 gives me 2. And what that's going to give me is a trinomial that I still need to multiply times my binomial. And if you remember, FOIL is really an acronym that helps us remember how to distribute those binomials and multiply them together. So when you have a trinomial times a binomial, it's still actually um, <clears throat> a distributing problem. The only difference is, um, instead of distributing only two terms, we're going to end up distributing all three. So it's going to look like this. I'll start with x squared times x, and I'll get x cubed. Then I distribute again to the second term, and I get x squared times 3, and I get plus 3x squared. Then once I've done that term, I move on to the next one, 3x times x, whoops, sorry, 3x times x gives me plus another 3x squared, and then 3x times 3 gives me plus 9x, and then moving on to my last term, 2 times x is going to give me plus 2x, and 2 times 3 is going to be give me plus 6. Okay, so when I'm all done with this whole thing and I start combining my like terms together, right, I've got two sets of like terms in here, I end up with this as my equation. x cubed is my largest degree, then the squareds would be next, so that's a 3x squared and a 3x squared makes 6x squared. Then the linear terms would be next, so that's 9x and 2x, that makes 11 x, and then lastly my constant, so plus 6. So when I put this in standard form and I get it all multiplied out, it multiplies out as x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. Okay, So you can take any um, group of binomials or whatever you have and put them into standard form. Now, the opposite of that would be to take a polynomial and write it in factored form. So we have standard form where there's no parentheses and all that, and now we have factored form where we want to make it back into the parentheses that we have. So to do that, I'm actually going to, in this case, we're going to start off, most of ours are going to have probably a greatest common factor, and then we'll factor something that's maybe quadratic. So in this case, if I look at my greatest common factor here, I've got 2x cubed, I've got 10x squared, and I've got 12x. And what I see that those three have in common would be each one of them has a factor of 2 in common, and each one of them is going to have a factor of x in common. So as my greatest common factor, I'm going to take out a 2 and an x. Okay, when I do that, that's going to leave me with simply one set of parentheses for now. And um, in that parentheses, 2x times x squared would give me 2x cubed. 2x times 5x would give me 10x, and 2x times 6 is going to give me 12x. So I start with my greatest common factor and one, one parentheses. Now I look at this one parentheses that I have here, and I decide if that could be factored any further. If not, I would just stop here. But I think I can factor x squared plus 5x plus 6 a little bit further. So I keep my 2x, my greatest common factor, and I set up my binomial pairs here, and I'm going to start with x times x, a plus sign and a plus sign because I've got all my positives up there. And then I'm looking for factor pairs of 6 that I could possibly use to make 5. So for my factor pairs of 6, I have choices of 1 and 6, or 2 and 3. And I think because everything is positive here, I should probably go with 2 
and three, oops, not two and five, how about two and three will make my five in the middle. If I multiply that back out by FOIL, it makes x squared plus five x plus six. So in factored form, this polynomial looks like two x times x plus two times x plus three. Okay, so we got factored form and we got standard form. Okay, so what does that factored form have to do with anything? Well, the factored form tells me where my zeros are by using the zero product property. And we used this in the last chapter when we solved quadratic equations by factoring. The zeros are on a graph where y is equal to zero. And that would be important because the place where y equals zero is always going to be, sorry, right here where it crosses the x-axis. So just like we have y-intercepts that are important, we also have x-intercepts that are important when we graph. So essentially, this is telling me where my graph is going to cross the x-axis. And if you look at my equation here compared to my graph over there, um, each of these factored forms, if I use my um, zero product property, if I want to know where the zeros exist, what I want to know is where would each one of these factors be equal to zero. Okay, so if I set up those three little equations there, I add two, one of those places is at positive two, subtract one, so one of those places is at negative one, and one of those places is at negative three. And if you look over here at my graph, right, a zero at negative three, a zero at negative one, and a zero at positive two. So all three of those places where it crosses the graph on the x-axis give me some indication of what these factors are going to be. So you can actually um, sort of determine what the equation of that polynomial would be if you know where the zeros are. Okay, so that's what leads us into the factor theorem. The factor theorem tells me that the expression x minus a is a linear factor of a polynomial if and only if the value a is a zero of the related polynomial function. Now, this is a fairly simple concept, right? If I know where the zeros are, I can make the factors, and if I can make the factors, then I can make the polynomial. And the one thing that I'd say that's tricky about this is that you have to pay attention to this formula up here says that the expression x minus a is the factor if a is the zero. So what that means is if a is a, is a positive three, like in it for my example here, when a is a positive three, then the expression has to be x minus three. So what's gonna happen when x is negative two, right? x minus negative two. And I'm not gonna write that as x minus two, negative two. What I'm gonna write that as is I'm gonna write it like this. So my function will be, according to my zeros, the first binomial is going to be x plus two. And that's because when I subtract a negative, it becomes plus. And then the next one would be x minus three, and then x minus three. Oops. And then if we pay attention at the beginning of the notes here, you noticed that we have um, to multiply three binomials together. So if we put it in standard form, we'll go ahead and do FOIL here, which again, I'm gonna skip writing that out. I'll go just combine my terms. Negative three x and a positive two x are gonna give me negative x minus six. And I wanna multiply that times x minus three still, okay? So then I do all my distributing here and I get um, x cubed, minus 3x squared minus x squared plus 3x, right? I'm just doing my distributing, minus 6x plus 18, okay? Then I'm gonna have to combine together all of my like terms and um, get my final answer. If I do that, I'm going to end up with x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x and plus 18. Okay, so that would be that 
in standard form. And I should probably put y equals there. All right, so let's look at this last one here. Let me switch colors since I kind of ran over into the other part so you can tell the difference. So let's set up our three binomials here. x minus 4, when I minus negative 4 is going to become plus 4. A negative 2, x plus 2, and a positive 1, x minus 1. So I do my FOIL, x squared plus, that's going to end up being a 6x total, plus 8, and then times x minus 1. So when I go to multiply this out, right, I'm distributing x squared times x, and x squared times negative 1. And I just repeat that for all of my numbers there. So x squared times x is x cubed, x squared times negative 1 is minus x squared. Move on to the 6x with both terms, right? So 6x times x makes plus 6x squared. And 6x times negative 1 is minus 6x. And then finally, the 8 is the last term. So 8 times x is 8x. And 8 times negative 1 is minus 8. Put together all my like terms. My final polynomial is x cubed minus, or sorry, plus 5x squared plus 2x minus 8. And that would be my polynomial in standard form that has those zeros.